All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got a pretty basic question from one of our people who asked the question. <laughs> students, right? Online students that I don't know. Her name's Felicia. She asked this question. You can ask them too by tweeting me at Twitter at Tyler Tarver. The end. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these two points, these two coordinates right here and right here, and we're going to figure out what that is in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Okay? Pretty much all we need to find out is our m and our b. Okay? We have neither of those right now. All we've got is a coordinate over here and one coordinate over here. A lot of people get confused and think, oh, that's two coordinates because there's two things. No, this is one point on the coordinate plane and this is another point on the coordinate plane. All right? First thing I recommend to do is to label your stuff. That's our x1, our y1, x2, y2. If you do that right off the bat, everything's going to be a lot easier. Okay? Now, there's a few simple steps to solving this, okay? Um, when you have the, the coordinates, first step, find the slope. I had to write that. Second step is you need to plug in m, which is our slope, into this equation, and then plug in either point, which is your x and your y, so you can choose either this one or this one, and then our last step, solve, well, second last step, solve for b, which is this little guy right here, and then our last step is um, plug back in M and B. Back into there and there. Okay, and that's it. Um, you can screenshot this, keep it for your notes, or you can write it down, pause it, whatever you have to do. Now I'm going to work the problem. So here we go. Okay, so first step. Um, I want to find the slope. Okay, so to find the slope, I do the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, doesn't matter which uh, coordinate, this one or this one, is 1 or 2. Doesn't matter, okay? Um, you can switch them out as long as, if I put this as 1, both of those are 1s. That's 2, those are 2, okay? So here we go. Let's plug in. That's why I label stuff, because it makes it easier. Our y2 is negative 5 minus our y1, which is negative 2. And then our x2 is 4. And then our x1 is negative 1. Okay, remember it's minus signs there, so don't get confused. Okay, so negative 5 minus negative 2. When you minus a negative, it turns into a positive, just like they said in Stand and Deliver. Remember that show? He's like, you don't understand. That's good stuff. I have a great impersonation. Okay, so it'll be negative 5 plus 2, because those turn into a positive. So it'll be negative 3 over, and then that turns into a positive as well, which is 5. So that's your slope. Cool. Done with that one. Now we just plug in our m into this equation. So it'll be y equals negative 3 over 5 x plus b. Okay, done with that part. Plug in either point, x or y. I'm going to go with this one, negative 1 and negative 2. So I just plug in my y, which is negative 2. That's negative 3 over 5 still. And then plug in negative 1. So it's times negative 1 plus b. Multiply those, and that would just be, turns into a positive 3 over 5 plus b. And right now we're, sorry, I already did that. So now we're solving for b. And so i got to get b by itself. So I'm almost done. i just got to get rid of 3 over 5. So I just do negative 2 minus 3 over 5. Now, me personally, I don't enjoy dealing with fractions. So I'm just going to turn that into 0. 0.6. Okay, so it'll be negative 2 minus 0. 0.6, which is a bigger negative, negative 2.6, equals b. I'm almost done. Okay, last step. I just need to plug it into the equation. y equals mx plus b. Plug in my m, which I've already found at the beginning, which is negative 3 over 5. I write x, and then I pick my b, which is negative 2.6. Now, a lot of times, whenever you get an answer, you always, whenever you're doing slope-intercept form, 
you want your m to be a fraction. You notice I didn't turn that into a decimal right here at the end because with slope, you always want it to be a fraction. That way you can go negative 3 over 5, you can go back 3 of 5. Okay, and you can make your point. That fraction helps us do the rate of change, you know, where you do your rise, I can't ever spell, over run. Okay, and that's what we want. Good handwriting there, Tyler. Thanks, but. All right, and then we put this right here, our slope intercept. I put that as a number with a decimal if I need to. That way I can just count up where I need to, to cross this little guy. So that's pretty much it, guys. You just learned everything you need to know in the entire world. Hey, thanks for showing up. Give me a subscribe and check out tarberacademy.com. Pizza?